in the book of Acts, chapter 16, uh, and we'll begin in verse 25. We talked a little about this last night in, in a different way, but uh, uh, this is the latter part of that chapter we talked about last night. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed the same praises unto God and the bread of the and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Shall we pray? God of heaven, we thank you once again tonight for this opportunity to assemble for this group of people. We thank you, Lord, for every person that's here, sinner and saint. We know in our hearts, Lord, that there are people here tonight that are in dire need of hearing the gospel and of responding to what you have to say to their hearts. I know, Lord, that once again uh, in the Brownsville Church, you're making a call. You're calling for sinners to come to repentance. And, Lord, in our hearts, we'd like to do everything that lays within our power to reach that person that's lost tonight without you and that person who needs to make a change in their life and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm asking you tonight for the convicting spirit of God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to reach down into the hearts and lives of men and women and change their mind and change their notions and give them a mind to follow you and immediately come to you on this night tonight. And we ask your blessing on the rest of this service. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Receiving the call. Jesus calls for you. You need to receive the call. The Apostle Paul and Silas have been out preaching. We talked about that. Uh, and we talked about last night just prior to this. And we just made a little uh, uh, illustration out of... Uh, 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 being uh, pessimistic or optimistic. Uh, but anyway, tonight we want to preach to you about what happened to Paul and Silas and what they had to say uh, in this prison. They're, they've been beaten, uh, look like almost to death. They are in stocks in the prison. Uh, I'm assuming that they're flat on their back. Uh, their feet are in stocks. I think their hands are in stocks as well. Their backs are bloody uh, from where they've been beaten. Uh, and they're physically in a bad shape. But spiritually, they seem to be in a good shape. Uh, and so at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Uh, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Can you imagine how that must have been for those two men to be bound in prison and, and no way out, no way to get out, uh, no way to get loose from the stocks that they were in. But all of a sudden, after they had prayed and, and sang praises to God and these other prisoners were there listening to them, they had a captive audience. Uh, the, the other prisoners couldn't get away. They had to be there. And listen to what Paul and Silas was singing uh, and how they was praising God. Uh, you know that must have had a great effect on those people because they knew the circumstance that Paul and them had come into the prison for. They knew they were beaten almost to death. They knew that they were bound by the Romans, you know, and, and that uh, there was no way out for them. But anyway, uh, after they had a little prayer meeting there, sing them a song or two, uh, all of a sudden things uh, begin to change and things to be, begin to be different. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Can you just imagine how that would be? All those prisoners there bound, locked up, unable to get out. But all of a sudden a great shaking comes along, shakes that old prison up right real good the doors all come open. Why would the doors come open? Because God came to set these men at liberty. He's going to set them free. If you're in sin tonight and you'll pray to God in heaven, He'll set you free. He'll open the doors uh, that you can uh, find a life to 
that you never had before. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Uh, you know, under uh, the law that they had back then and the custom that they had, uh, if you were a soldier or a uh, warden over a prison, uh, if you were working with prisoners and everything and, and, and you were guarding them and you let them go, then it was your life for theirs. Or if they got away from you, uh, it cost you your life. And so uh, this jailer, uh, realizing that, that the prisoners had opportunity to leave uh, and, and to run away, uh, he just decided that in order to keep from uh, having to be publicly killed, he just kill himself, get out of his misery, you know. Uh, but the Lord uh, had better plans for this uh, jailer than that. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus, or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house, and he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. Can you just think about that for a minute or two? Uh, and think about uh, what happened to this man and what a circumstance came in his life in just a heartbeat of time. Uh, if you, you just can't imagine yeah. uh, how quickly that God can do things and, and how he can accomplish things uh, when we become willing to turn ourselves over to him. This jailer uh, intended to kill himself and Paul stopped him from it uh, and, and began to tell him about Jesus how that he could have a change in his life. And, and, and he didn't have to wait no six months or a year uh, for that to happen. It was going to happen that very night. Uh, and it could happen here tonight if you would open your heart to the Lord and receive Jesus Christ in your heart. I'm going to tell you tonight, you can go through that door back there feeling 100% different than you did when you came in. And I can tell you that from experience because it happened to me in one night's time, the Lord saved me. It didn't take me no six months or a year to get saved. But God saved me when I opened my heart on that altar to Him and asked Him for mercy and for forgiveness. Uh, God saved me right then and started me off toward heaven, Brother Harry. And I'll tell you, it's been a wonderful journey. I've had good things happen to me. I've had bad things happen to me and all like that. But I've never had the Lord ever treat me bad or do me wrong or anything like that. But He's always encouraged me to come on. Come on, Ron. Do some more. Try it again. Now get up and preach again. Get up and sing again. Get up and pray again. Yeah. Witness again. Talk to folks. Go to the hospital. Visit somebody. Speak to somebody that's in need of you. Glory to God. The Lord gives us things to do uh, and gives us direction in our lives. You don't know what God has planned for you. I had no idea that the Lord was going to call me to preach. That wasn't even, I wouldn't even think about something like that. Back in that time, that was just beyond my comprehension to think about that. Uh, but when the Lord saved me, He already had a plan for me that I didn't know nothing about. I had no idea what the Lord was going to do for me as time would go on. Uh, and anyway, uh, as time has gone on, uh, the Lord's taken me a lot of places. We've done a lot of things. We've been with a lot of people down through the years. God's been good to me. And here uh, we find this man. Uh, we're preaching a, a, a threefold text uh, on the call, the question, and then the answer. And so the, tonight we talked about Matthew, the call. We talked about you. We feel that the Lord has called you. I don't think you came to church tonight just simply because you made up your mind and decided you would come. I don't think that's what happened. You may feel like that. You may think that uh, and everything. But I don't tell you tonight, I think God Himself sent you to church. Yes. I think you're here because you're supposed to be here. I think that young man that prayed here last night came last night because 
God ordained for that young man to come and come down to this altar and pray in the altar service and change his life and get started off toward heaven. I don't think that was something that just happened by chance or anything like that. God, I mean, we don't live and, and work on luck, uh, Brother Lee, but it's the hand of God that, that brings us to where we are and brings us to the place we need to be. And so I feel like uh, that the Lord has ordained for you to be here tonight and you to hear the gospel. Uh, and we're preaching about the call of God. God calls every man. And then the question is, uh, what are we going to do uh, with, with it when the Lord calls for us? In, in verse 30, this jailer uh, asked this question to uh, the Apostle Paul. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And I'd like for you to think about that tonight. What must I do to be saved? Uh, because that's really what everybody needs to think about. Uh, and he answered the question for him there uh, in verse 31. He said, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Talking to the jailer. If you believe, if you believe uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, I not only save you, but I save your whole family. Glory to God. God deals with families. You know that? But somebody has to be number one. Somebody has to get saved first. Yeah. Somebody has to start before the rest of them come. Uh, Noah was fortunate in his time, and there was only eight people saved by water. And you know who that was? It was Noah's family. Yeah. That's all was saved by water. Uh, but Noah did something that probably you and I may not ever do if we're not awfully careful, and that's to see our own family saved. If we're not careful, we have to see somebody in our own family unsaved and die lost without God. But it don't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. If you get saved, it'll influence somebody else. If they get saved, it'll influence somebody else. My mother was a Christian. My mother influenced what I do. My mother's been dead for years. Uh, but anyway, my mother's Christian living had an effect on me like nothing else. Uh, glory to God. I talked to uh, Donnie's brother today down there uh, uh, at, at the hospital. And uh, we went down there to see him and pray for him. Uh, and I talked to him a little bit. And I said, uh, I knew your mother. I've been in church with your mother. Uh, he'd been, uh, I understand in the past, a little hard to talk to maybe about salvation and stuff. But his notion has changed. He has changed. There's something different about him. There was today. Uh, when I told him, I said, I've been in church with your mother. It changed his outlook. It changed his attitude. Amen. You know why? Mother has an effect on people. Yes. Mother has an effect on her children. Mother has an effect on dad. Mother has an effect on a lot of people. Glory to God. And so uh, we want to see people saved. The jailer, uh, he's about to get saved. And then when the jailer gets saved, all his family's going to get saved too. Glory to God. What an amazing God we serve. I mean, he's not, uh, he doesn't want us to uh, uh, think that, well, I'm all alone, you know. And, and my husband uh, won't pray or my husband won't live right or my children won't get saved or, or my wife won't get saved or whatever your circumstance is. Hey, don't think like that uh, because this is a family thing. God wants to save families. He wants people to come together in the house of God uh, and praise Him and live right. Uh, and here this jailer is getting an opportunity of a lifetime. Can you imagine uh, had this jailer uh, turned uh, the Apostle Paul aside and refused the call of God, he would have lost his entire family. He lost his whole family because he refused live right for God. And so here it is. Brought them out and said to them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Call, question, and let's look at the answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved and thy house. Yeah. I mean, I'm not only going to save you, but I'm going to save your family too. Right. By the man. The Lord is wonderful. Uh, the Book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Even when we were dead in sins, and to be in sin, the term that the Lord uses is that you're dead. 
You may be alive in your physical body, but spiritually speaking, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. Even when we were dead in sins, hath, he hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, your Son. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now listen to verse 8 and 9 if you don't get nothing else. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. None of us were ever able to get to the place that we were good enough to be saved. Nobody ever does. That's, That's right. not the point. Jesus Christ on Calvary shed his blood that men could come by faith. That's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Even when we were dead in sins, had he quickened together with yes, Christ, Lord. by grace are you saved. Grace is an unmerited favor of God. Yeah. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything that, it, that you're entitled to it. Jesus did it all on Calvary. And therefore, you can have it if you want. Yeah. If you have to want it. You have to want to be saved. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe in Jesus Christ. And we're going further uh, with, this, with this question and the answer of it. For by grace are you saved through faith. Of grace are you saved through faith. Scripture tells us in another place, he that cometh, talking about people that's coming to be saved and coming to the Lord, he that cometh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I, I honestly, uh, I heard about Jesus, you know, just like the rest of you had in your life. I've been to Sunday school. My mother was a Christian. She sent us to Sunday school. I heard the Sunday school lessons as a kid growing up. And all that, I didn't actually comprehend Jesus. I didn't. I mean, I I believed in much as I could as a as a child growing up that Jesus was the Savior of the world. I I, I was taught that. So if you'd asked me that, I'd have said, "Yeah, that, gee, that's right." Gee. But I didn't comprehend Jesus like I did after I came down here. I come down to pray. I come down to ask for forgiveness of my sins. But it was a real peculiar time for me. I've heard my mother pray all down through the years. I heard mommy pray when I was a little kid to go to we lived in a mining camp. I go down to pump, had a hand pump, take a bucket, go down and pump her a bucket of water, bring it back to the house. And I come back to the house and mommy would be in the, in the bedroom praying. So I'd heard prayer literally all of my life. But see, I come to pray. But I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't know what I was doing. I come to the altar. I was broken in my sins. My heart was broke. I was crying and weeping. And I got down to the altar. And I think, what can I tell God? How can I approach God? What can I? I never done nothing good. I've been a sinner all the time. I've done the things the other sinner boys did. I did the things that the other kids did growing up, you know, and all that. And uh, came to the altar and, and, and knelt in the altar and was crying and weeping and trying to face my sins. And I'm thinking, what in the world can I tell God? I mean, I knew he knew all about what I've done. But I'm trying to figure out how can I approach him? What can I say? How can I possibly talk to God? I'm not worthy to talk to God. I'm not worthy to be forgiven. All these things were facing me that night on the altar. I'd come for forgiveness, but I honestly didn't know how to get it. I honestly didn't know what to say. And I was crying and weeping and crying and weeping and trying to figure out 
What can I say? What can I say? How can I approach God? What can I say to God? One word came to my mind. One simple word. The word was mercy. And I spoke out loud to God. And I said, mercy. I said, God, would you have mercy on me? Yeah. That was all it took. That was everything that it took. From that time on, Harry, I've not had any problem praying. I've not had any problem telling God what's on my heart, what's on my mind, what I stand in need of, what I need for Him to do, what He wants me to do. I listen to what God has to say to me, and I talk to God. I try to talk to Him every day. I try to never let a day go by that I don't have a conversation at some time with God in prayer, along the highway, in the house, wherever I'm at, if I'm working, whatever I'm doing, I'm still in the back of my mind having a conversation with God. Something changed me on that altar. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I'll tell you tonight when you get saved, the preacher won't have to tell you, your mommy won't have to tell you, your daddy won't have to tell you. Glory to God, Jesus will make Himself real to you. Yeah. You'll be the person that knows when you get saved. Yeah. Had an old man come to Lewis Creek years ago, Archie Jackson, and Archie was uh, way up in his seventies. Uh, him and him and the two of his sisters and and his uh, wife, they all were were very elderly. Uh, and they came to Lewis's Creek. I was preaching a revival. Hadn't been there long, and and, and they heard me preaching a funeral. I, and somehow hearing me preach a funeral, they said, we won't go to church with this man. Well, I didn't know none of that at the time, you know. Uh, I've been introduced to him, that's all. Anyway, they showed up as having a revival. They showed up at the revival. And sat back about, well, these folks are back here, Don and him, sitting back about like that. I preached, opened the altar. All four of them got up coming to the altar. Three ladies, I don't remember if they witnessed that night to being saved, but I think they did. But anyway, uh, Archie prayed, and as quick as Archie got up, he said, I didn't get it, just like that. And I thought, hmm. Next night we come back to revival, all four of them people come back down to the altar again. Old Archie prayed a while that night. Quick as he got up, he said, I didn't get it. I thought, hmm. <laughs> Next night he came back, got in the altar, got up, he said, I got it. You know what was wrong? Archie and his brother had had an argument, and there was bad feelings between them. And, uh, they weren't speaking to each other. They weren't having nothing to do with each other and everything at that time. And old Archie realized, I'm going to fix this up with my brother before I can get saved. And he was right. He was right. He needed to do that. He went that third day, seen his brother, talked to Junior and apologized, got it all fixed up. When he came back that night, he went to hit the altar. I got it. He knew he got saved. I knew I got saved. I knew I got saved. Glory to God, it's a real experience. If you've never had it, let me tell you, there's nothing like it. Amen. There is nothing like being saved uh, and having the Lord touch your heart with His great spirit and do something for you. Uh, but we're talking about uh, what the, the question uh, and, and the answer to the question, what must I do to be saved? What must I This is what everybody has to do. It's not just... Me or you or, 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 or somebody else. Uh, but it's everybody has to do the same thing. It comes to everybody uh, the same. It's not any different for one person than it is another. Uh, but we're all alike when it comes uh, to the point of getting saved uh, and, and, and coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. It says this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, 
The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Jesus Christ set up the grace plan. They were under the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with it. He fulfilled it. And he set up a grace plan whereby men could be saved. Uh, and men could know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Let's go back to the book of Romans and, and read just a bit. We're going to close here shortly. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith thee? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. I have to tell you tonight that if you're going to get saved, you have to come by faith. In all these years of Christianity, in all these meetings and things that I've been in and people that I've dealt with, I've never seen Jesus. I see him through the scripture. I understand what he's like because the Bible describes him and tells all about him. But Brother Lee, I've never seen him with my eyes. I have not been able to do that. Everything that I've done, the Bible tells me that I have to walk by faith, not by sight. We prayed the prayer tonight that we tried to pray for these folks that are sick. We prayed in faith, trying to believe that God would heal them. You never know till you try. It takes faith to try. You can't, you can't come to the Lord except by faith. Uh, there's people, you know, that, that want you to do different things and want you to uh, be a certain way and all like that, but you can't do that. You must believe in Jesus Christ. It's the word of faith. Verse 9. That if thou, if you or me or anybody else, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, uh, we've got some folks, uh, they call them, uh, and, I, and I mean, well, I'm not mentioning the denomination in that way. You know, I wouldn't want to insult anybody uh, by saying the wrong thing. But we've got a group of people in our area that they believe that in order to be saved, before you can be saved, you must have a dream and see some sort of a light. Or you must have a vision of some kind and see a light. And then once you do that, then you can come to church, join the church, and, and you're part of the church. The Bible don't say that anymore. That's, that's foolish. But people have traditions. I have lots and lots of Amish friends. I go to Ohio about every year and stay with my friends. And, and uh, they're some of the finest people I've ever met. They're really fine people. But in their belief, in what they believe, they believe to raise your children up to follow the customs that they brought with them from Europe. And when they get between 16 and 20 years old, if they so desire and will commit to the church, they'll take them in. They never have to pray a prayer that I know of or do anything other than join the church. You can never be saved by joining the church. There's no church the Holiness Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Church of God, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, there ain't a church in the world you can join and get saved. It doesn't work like that. We come to Jesus. I mean, you can get saved on this mountainside. You can climb up this hill halfway and get down and pray. Jesus can save you right there. Amen. It's not that we're in the church house that saves us. No, it's not the church that saves us. But the Bible tells us here that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, you have to confess Jesus is my Savior, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And believe that after three days in the heart of the earth, Jesus rose again. You hear that on Easter more than you will any other time. Jesus rose again the third day. Uh, then you can be saved. Then it went on to say, for with the heart 
man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Archie Jackson said, I've got it. Got what? I got saved. By who? Jesus saved me. And from that time on, he came to Lewis's Creek Church and I preached his funeral when he died. Preached his funeral, his wife's funeral, both of his sister's funerals. Years and years later, they all gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and way up in their 70s. Uh, and, and, and one of the sisters lived to be 100 years old and 30 days. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And, and, and it's amazing to me uh, how that, that, that people, when they get saved, their whole personality, everything changes. Everything's different. A smile. Is on a face that used to have a frown. A happy voice comes from the first from a person who used to be depressed and, and just felt so bad. Uh, and, and sin had them beaten down and had them uh, in, in the Maori ruts, you know. Uh, but when they got saved, hey, 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 I got saved. I got saved. I went back to high school, you know. I got saved. I mean, it was on Thursday night, November 20th, 1960. Uh, and I was on the high school basketball team. Uh, and I went in that next morning. I turned my shoes and my uniform in. They said, what's wrong with you? I said, I got saved last night. Are you crazy? I said, no, no, I'm not crazy. I got saved. <laughs> and the thing was, it wasn't that... I, it wasn't that I thought that basketball was a bad sin or something like that. I just knew that from that time on, I wasn't going to have time for basketball no more. Somehow I knew that in a day's time. And I went to talking to my high school friends, and, and I said, I got saved last night. And, and they wouldn't say nothing. Some of them didn't say nothing. They do this. Yeah. One way. And then I had some others leave. It was Christians. And we got closer together. And we became great friends. And our friends still until today. Me and one of my cousins, Chad Blanker, uh, got a path for Chad's blind too. He and I grew up together, played ball together. He's a little older than me, but we got saved in the same revival. He got saved the night before. I got saved the next night in the same revival. Uh, and we're still friends, and we still have associations with each other in Christianity. We pray for each other, and we deal with each other. You know why? Uh, the Lord gave us some friends that never would turn us aside. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. Are you telling me, preacher, that I can be saved? I'm telling you, you can be saved tonight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him... For forgiveness of your sins and mean it from your heart, Jesus will come into your heart and I'm telling you, you'll know it. Yeah. The next morning after I got saved, it was November, the leaves were gone, I, and, and we live in the mountains just like you do, southeastern Kentucky and Harlan County, uh, coal mining district just like it is here. Uh, and when I got out the next morning and looked up to the mountain in front of me, I'm telling you, it looked so different. I, I couldn't imagine. I, I kept looking at the mountains. And, I, and you know, it, it ought to have been a drab, bad time of the year, you know, if the leaves and everything had been out, you know, and the sun had been shining, it might have been different. But somehow, the Lord let me look at the mountains different than I'd ever looked at them before. Yeah. Things had changed. Oh, Things yeah. became different. Yeah. Things were different than they had been the day before because Jesus came into my heart, gave me a new lease on life, started me off toward heaven, got me going in the direction I needed to go in. But the day before that, I was a lost human being. I was down, broken, had nothing. I had no hope in life. I wondered a lot of times, what am I going to do? What, what am I, I going to, uh, you know, how, what will I excel at in life? 
Uh, what will my job be? How will I uh, provide a living for my family and all that? None of those things, you know, I could figure out. Uh, but after I got saved, I didn't worry about that no more. Because I left that up to Jesus. I said, He's going to fix something for me. And he did. I worked 39 and a half years on the railroad. Loved it right in the bottom of my heart. I loved the work that I did. Uh, I had some bad nights and some wet nights and cold nights and different things like that. But I'll tell you, if I had to do it over again and I was able, I'd go back and do it over again. Because God fixed me a job uh, that I could do. Uh, and in later years, He fixed it where I'd be able to preach and go have revivals uh, and preach funerals and stuff and not have to worry about uh, being uh, bound down by the job so bad that I couldn't get loose to do the work. I want us to stand. The girls want you to stand. I'm going to open this altar. <coughs> you know, if, if we were down here uh, preaching some type of magical something that if you would do, you would get a million dollars or something like that. Well, this church has to fill up. They'd be people from everywhere coming if they thought they'd, you know. We're preaching something that's worth more to you than silver and gold. Yeah. Peter and John, when they met the man at the beautiful gate, he was laying there in the dust begging for alms. And here comes Peter and John down to the temple, the air of prayer, and this old bum's laying there. He's filthy and dirty. His family's brought him out there. He couldn't work for himself. He couldn't help himself. So they take him down and put him out in front of the temple in hopes that people will have compassion on him and, and give him some money. Yeah. And Peter and John, and, and, and this, this crippled man, sees these two guys coming. And, 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 and he, I, I just kind of imagine, you know, that, that he... He, he kind of got excited a little bit. He thought, well, here comes two guys, and, and they may have a little money. You know, they, they, if, if, I, if I approach them just right, they, they'll give me something. He, 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 I need some money. I need what they've got. I need some money from them. And, and so he, he asked an alms. And Peter and John fastened their eyes on him, and they said, silver and gold have I done. I, I don't have no money to give you. But he said, such as I have given out of thee, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And what happens? A poor old crippled man laying down there, he couldn't get up, all of a sudden, jumps up. He yeah. got so excited, he goes running down through the temple. Hey, 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 look here, look here. Hey, 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 look what happened to me. Look what happened to me. Hey, look here, look here. Jesus, Jesus came by. Somebody touch me. Somebody heal me. Somebody did something for me. I can work for him now. I can do what I need to do because Jesus has touched me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All the people in the temple, they knew about this man. They knew he'd been out there today, but they also found out he's met up with somebody. He met up with somebody. You ever met Jesus? I have in the Spirit. Amen. In the spirit, on that altar, that night somebody got in my heart, and they never had left. Jesus said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Your husband might forsake you, your children might forsake you, the best friend you ever had might forsake you. I'll tell you tonight, you can't run Jesus off. That's right, brother. If you'll be right with him, he'll always be right with you. Yeah. I've looked death in the face two or three different times uh, in my life, and every time I looked death in the face, Jesus stepped up and stopped it. I turned the tractor over in the pond at my house here, 2015 or 16, I believe it was, rolled me over, the, 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 the roll bar caught me across the back, shoved me down in that pond, and I was like this, just my head out of water. Nobody there but me. My buddy was up on the hill at the house running a weed eater. 
uh, trimming around the house, and I'd been running the mower up and down the drive and mowing down that way. But anyway, uh, here I am, that, that thing flipped over in there with me, pinned me down, I couldn't get up, and I knew probably in two minutes it'd be gone. I knew that Dad couldn't hear me. He was running a weed eater. I mean, he's a hundred yards away. I hollered for him anyway, but he didn't hear me. But I said, Jesus, help me. Yeah. Either that or I said, help me, Jesus, three times. Gary said, I was running that weed eater and some good to have Christian friends. He said, he said, he said, something spoke to me. He said, you need to check on Ron. <coughs> he dropped that weed eater right then and run to the brow of the hill in the yard where he could look down. He could see the tractor upside down. He couldn't see me. He runs down there, Lee. Uh, but the, the tractor weighed 2,000 pounds, maybe something like that. No way he can get it off of me. He runs out to the neighbors, the state trooper. Uh, gets him, they come back, bring two roof bolts, run up under that uh, tractor and raise it just enough that I can crawl out. And I'm thinking, in two minutes I'd be dead. And I don't have no regrets. But I said, Lord, if you don't care, I don't want to die this much older. Oh, I wish you knew Jesus tonight like I do. Bless him, I wish you knew this man. I'm telling you tonight, there's not a heartache you've ever had in your life what Jesus can't solve. Yeah. I want you to come and pray tonight. I want you to be introduced to Jesus Christ. I want Him to save you and to touch you because you tell me if we were to live 10 years from now, you say, Preacher, the best thing ever happened to me was the night you preached to me and I come to the altar and I say, It'll be something you will never forget. It'll be an hour in your life that you will never, ever forget yeah, when you get saved.